State College PA, where hopes are sky high. One year removed from finishing seventh in the nation, Penn State returns a ton of star power, including an uber-talented sophomore class. Is this the year the Nittany Lions break through and get to their first ever CFP? We start to get some answers on our Penn State training camp show now. And with that, we welcome you to State College. Dave Revson alongside Jerry DiNardo and Howard Griffith. Expansion is behind us. Excited to join you guys on the road. Where you been? <laughs> I, I, there were a couple things going on. Okay, yeah. okay. You may have heard about that. I can fill you in if you haven't heard about it. Later. That. Later. Right. Do that right. later. <laughs> uh, good to be with you guys. We got a chance to watch Penn State here yep. tonight. Uh, this is a team, I don't think there's any great secret what the hopes and expectations are. For this team, it's to potentially win the Big Ten East. It's to win the conference, to compete for the college football playoff, and maybe even to be in that national championship picture. They finished seventh in the nation last year. We just watched them practice. I'll go first. They're pretty good. <laughs> right, and James Franklin's best team and his, his most talented team, and he's addressed some issues, right? He's addressed the offensive line. That's probably been the biggest issue. For, for a lot of years here at Penn State, and he's breaking in a new quarterback in Drew Aller who has all the talent in the world who needs to develop. I think you start to talk about the talent. I think you start there and just the way they were able to play and compete last year. Now, obviously, this is a different team than last year's, but this is a more talented team. And you talk about that depth in the offensive line that I know we'll talk about later, but you start to see the pieces. Uh, you look and yes, they lost a little bit on the defensive side, but what Coach Diaz did last year was still remarkable. They have really put themselves in a position, not only on the recruiting circuit, but on the coaching cir circuit and developing players that puts them in that conversation where now they can compete at a high level. I mean, there's just no obvious weakness, right? There's nothing you look at on this team and say, I don't see how you compete with that. And then you were talking about depth, Howard, and I think yeah. that's the thing that really stood out to me is just in watching and kind of eyeballing it, my impression was I don't think there's an area where they don't, not only are they not good enough, but where they don't have depth also. Yeah, they've done. And that speaks, once again, it speaks to recruiting and what they've been able to do out on the road by stockpiling class after class. I think one of the challenges, and you talk about this sometimes when you talk about uh, teams that have had success, the complacency side of it, the mental part of it, that's the part that they'll have to get over. And I'm sure we're talking to the strength and conditioning uh, team that they've none of that show, has shown itself. So now it's about really getting them to that first week and continuing to stack wins together. You know, the one area I think they didn't feel as good at as the other areas is wide receivers. And if today's any indication, they're, they have solved that problem. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it's an incredibly, incredibly talented group. Remember, quarterback, you want to be at least too deep. So it's not only Drew Aller. They've, mm -hmm. they've got to make sure that they've got some depth there. You, you know, you put a quarterback in harm's way and something happens to him. And so they're going to have to develop not only Drew, but the depth behind him. And there's been some talk. I know James Franklin had mentioned in the spring how excited he was about Bo Prabula. Right. And maybe you incorporate a package for him, partly to take some pressure off of Drew Aller, but partly because they think they might have something there as well. Right. No, it's, it was so hard to get a good feel for Bo today because he's with the second offense. Sometimes they were going against the first defense. You know, he never really went with the ones. Uh, and so he's going to be fine. They've, they've said he's had a really good spring, and he's right there. But, uh, again, the wide receiver thing uh, appears to be solved, and the depth of quarterback is something that has to continue. And, Howard, you were talking about the complacency. I would guess that all you have to do is remind these guys that you lost to Michigan and Ohio State a year ago, and that has been the thorn in this program's side. I and mean, again, James Franklin's done amazing things. They're four and 14 against Ohio State and Michigan, and he knows that to take that next step, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to beat them, but that's incentive for everyone, I would oh, think. Oh, without a doubt. But I think when, when I bring that up, it's more so because we've had young players that have had such a great deal of success that what are they hearing? And it's not that I expect that to happen because I don't. I think this is a team when you can just look how talented they are, not only as the players, but as the coaching staff as well. It's just another opportunity. When you start talking about a team needing to get over the hump, you look at everything. You look at the mental aspect, the physical aspect, execution. You look at it all yeah. when you look at teams that are where they are because they're so close. Yeah, Howard, I think that those two losses are more motivation than anything. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I don't see 
how it, they they could be complacent. They haven't they haven't won their division. There's still a lot in front of. There's them. still a lot in front of them. So if anything, you know, with this team right now, I don't know that there could be any better motivator. Mm-hmm then when are you going to beat Ohio State and when are you going to beat Michigan? And I think this is a year they could do both. <laughs> they absolutely yep. could do both. It was really impressive out there. We'll break this team down as, as we continue here throughout the day. But a really, really good day. First full day in pads for the Nittany Lions. Seven starters back for Manny Diaz's defense this year. A group who led the nation in pressures, hurries, and PBUs last season. Star power at every level, powered now with two of the biggest names, Curtis Jacobs and Kalen King. Talk to me a little bit about the mentality of the defense. You go first. Uh, I feel like the mentality of our defense is mm-hmm. like simple. It's just like fearless or oh, and, and fast. Because like Manny preaches every day in the meeting rooms like to be fearless, trust your leverage, trust the people around you. And I feel like just doing all those things to just help everyone on the field at, at once, really. Yeah, it just come down to the trust. Um, once you, when you trust your teammates, you trust that leverage. It allows you to just play fast and just get to the ball as fast as possible. And that's that's how we operate as a defense. How did you guys develop that trust? Just countless hours of practice and walkthroughs and, and film studies and just meetings and all those things. Like um, over the summer, you know, we had a lot of times where we like meet as a defense and go over like calls and like. Um, just our fits, our run reads, our pass reads, and things of that nature. So I feel like all those little things that we put in in the off season and before this point right here just helped us. This defense took a huge step last year. I mean, really unbelievable. And we expect to continue to build on that. What are some of the things that you guys want to get out of this training camp so that you're ready to go week one? Just approaching every day, um, trying to be dominant, um, having a great routine coming in every day ready to work. And I feel like that will pay off if we stack days every day and just be consistent. For me, it's just just proving to my teammates and my coaches again that you know I'm, I'm one of those guys that you can trust. I'm one of those guys who, who's ready to uh, have a big season like I did last year. So just showing that I can you know, do it again and take that next step from where I was at last year. Individual techniques, things that you worked on to take your game to the next level as well? Yeah, so I worked on a lot of things this offseason, like my speed, my strength, my technique, my footwork, all those things, just like my ball skills, just just trying to touch up on little areas that I know I can improve on because I'm not a finished product yet, so I'm just trying to, you know, keep reaching that. See, me, I um, I dove in a film study, and I tried to encourage my LBs to do the same because I feel like once you get that, get that uh, know-how, you know what's going on before the play, it just it makes it so much easier. It's like it's like cheating on a test, really. You just you know that you know what's gonna happen and you just react. So I feel I feel like that was the most important part I need to add to my game. So I saw one of the most interesting things today that I've never seen at a football practice. Coach Smith hitting tennis balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take me through that. Man, I really hate that drill, but <laughs> tell me first of all, tell me why, and then you can tell them, you know. Why do I hate the drill? Exactly. Because like it's 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 difficult. Let me find out you can't see. You play baseball? I did. Did For you play in the year. outfield? Yes, I was an outfield. So this shouldn't be hard. I mean, yeah, but it's different when you got a mitt on versus <laughs> when you got yeah, you gotta use your you gotta use your hands. You know, the mitt you can you can just place it in the area and most likely you're gonna catch it. But when you gotta really track it and catch it with your hands, that's way harder. And he be smacking it a hundred feet in the air. So. He's not even looking. Yeah. I'm looking he, at he the just street. <laughs> One after he the other. Character. <laughs> it's only going to make us better, though. The other drill I saw that was interesting is in special teams, punt block drills. There's a soccer ball there. Yeah. And you guys are trying to block soccer balls. What, what is that? Is that just to protect the players, or uh, it's what's just, the thought process? It's, just, it's us working to the block point. Uh, we take special teams super serious around here. Um, we feel like that's – that's the area where we can change the game and we can give us an edge in every game. So every drill we work is game-like and we approach it like, like it's a game. Okay, you guys got, you can describe this defense in one word, but they have to be different. Go. But they have to be different? You guys have to be different. One word. Yep. Mm, I got my word. All right, I'll give you a minute. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I say dominant. Um, that's just, I know that's how us LBs, um, we determine that's how we're going to approach every day. And we just preach that to the defense every day. I say physical because, like, you know, not only can D linemen and linebackers be physical, but I feel like we got, if not one of the most physical corner room in the country from 
from myself to Johnny Dixon to mm -hmm. all the younger guys below, I feel like, man, we, we real physical, whether that be yes, block sir. destruction, coming up and making a tackle, getting off blocks, things of that nature. I feel like this is one of the most physical rooms I've ever been a part of in my life. So Penn definitely. State will be successful if? We lock in, trust each other, and trust the process. If we dominate on defense. Appreciate you guys. Hey, watching the day, it was the first first day in pads. You guys were flying around. This is one of the most physical practices I've seen coming to Penn State. So you guys are well on your way. Good luck this season. Stay healthy. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. The Penn State schedule starts with the renewal of an old regional rivalry as the Nittany Lions host West Virginia. First three conference games are all crossovers, Illinois, Iowa, and Northwestern. They go to Ohio State. Penn State's offense improved dramatically last season. Can they continue the momentum after losing a record-setting QB? We'll pose that question and more to James Franklin as he joins us later in the show. The Penn State Camp Tour on the Big Ten Network. to pick your poison. You want to take a bad step and miss an angle on Nick, or you want to have your feet in the ground and get dropped by Capron. Nick has the ability to go 80 yards at any time with a combination of size and speed. Capron needs to be there really good in the trenches, getting that extra yard, making people miss, and getting to that second level. I think they complement each other very well. That duo of Nick Singleton and Katron <laughs> Allen, one of the many reasons that Penn State fans are incredibly optimistic about this offense. We had a chance to watch them here. I would say it's uh, fair for me to assume <laughs> that uh, all three of us thought this was a, a high-level group. What, what stood out? Well, the offensive line stands out because it's different than this, the previous teams here. They've had really good running backs. They've had good quarterbacks. They've had good wide receivers. And they've been okay in the offensive line if you have a high bar, which I think we all have for Penn State. So to me, the, the unusual, not the unusual thing, but the new thing is they're not only talented in the offensive line, mm -hmm. but they are deep. They have done a great job recruiting in the offensive line. And I think they do an outstanding job of coaching up that group because we're talking about the running backs, but – and you talk about pass running back. But Penn State, their issue was they couldn't run the ball when they wanted to run the ball. Now they've gotten to a point where if they want to run it, they can run it. If they want to go, quote, unquote, four-minute offense, uh, uh, suck up the clock, kill the clock, they can do that now. And now you're seeing these elite running backs be able to take advantage of it. But it all starts up front, and that group has gotten so much better. Howard, you mentioned run it when they have to run it. They did the four-minute drill today. Mm -hmm. and they they referenced the game against Wisconsin, which I'm guessing they weren't satisfied with the four-minute drill. But today was the first day in pads, yeah. and those are two really good running backs. They tackled them. I mean, <laughs> they, they, they were yeah. full speed in right. every phase of the game. That was impressive for the first day. They were dramatically better in the red zone mm -hmm. last year, to your point. They had scored touchdowns in less than 50% of their red yeah. zone opportunities the previous year. They were well over 70 last year from 3.2 yards a carry to 4.8 in one year. I mean, that is a remarkable jump. Again, part of it's the talent of, of those backs. I mean, to have two that make that kind of an impact yeah. is, is really unusual. But again, the old line was great. Look, everyone wants to know about the quarterback, Andrew <laughs> Aller. Uh, Sean Clifford, I, I understand he had his critics among the Penn State fan base, but he still leaves with just about every record in, in their record book. So uh, when you replace a quarterback of that magnitude, it's never easy, no matter how talented the guy is. What did you guys take from Aller? Yeah, I'd say three things about Aller. He has the talent. He got some valuable game reps yep. last year. He wasn't at the end of the game when they Mama had a big baby. lead. And he's got the support of an offensive line and a running back room that's pretty <laughs> incredible. Uh, that's a good way for a young quarterback to break in, that kind of support around him. And he works. Yeah. I mean, that's the, you talk to people around – the campus, he works, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's in the meeting room. He's always in the meeting room, always studying film, trying to get better. He understands the pressure that he's under playing quarterback, but I don't think that pressure is any greater than what he's putting on himself when he looks in the mirror. So I think he'll be prepared. Will there be some bumps in the road? Of course. That's, that's just the nature of the position. But for him to have played 
in big games last year on the road, and as you talked about quality reps on the road, it's going to it's gonna do wonders for him as he continues to move forward. It'll be different because he's got to do it each and every week when he's healthy, but it's still it's still a different process and where he's he's come from. He's really dialed in to what he needs to do. The great things about bumps in the road is if you win the game with the bumps. <laughs> it gets you ready for the real big games. And they're in position to do that, Absolutely. right? Because you have an outstanding defense. you got two great backs. I'd say three really good backs. Trey Potts is a pretty good one, <laughs> too. And you've got the offensive line. Yep. All the things we talked about put you in a position where – you can make some of those mistakes and still recover yeah. with a W. Clifford left as Penn State's career passing leader, but there is a ton of hype around Drew Aller, the former five star who threw four TD passes as a true freshman last year. He and star running back Nick Singleton now with Howard. Nick Drew, you guys are coming in to second training camp. What's been different this year for you coming in as the quarterback that's expected to lead this team? Yeah, I think just the biggest thing is I'm more comfortable, a lot more comfortable than I was last year. It's really my fourth time being through mm -hmm. the installs, just through two springs and now mm -hmm. the, the second training camp. So a lot more familiarity with how Coach Jurisic wants us to operate the offense as a whole and then just comfort level, able to really lock into what the defense is doing, recognize different stuff pre-snap, whereas last year I was kind of just worrying about my job and what I had to do with the offensive play that was called. Now I'm really able to really just play quarterback and be relaxed. Nick, you were out there playing, yeah. <laughs> getting, getting things done at a high level. The expectations uh, for this running back room are, are through the roof. What are some of the things that, that have changed for you coming into this year? i say from last year, just everything's slowing down. Um, since I came in, in the spring, it helped me um, just knowing the plays and stuff, knowing the formations. Then this year, you know, have, you, have a, you have a year on your belt, under your belt. So, you know, you know everything now. Um, you just, you know, you just playing. So you're an old vet now. You get to watch him. How's he changed as a, as a player on the field and, and as he moves <laughs> around in the locker room? No, nah, Drew's been always good since last year, too. Um, it helps with Sean being up there, um, coaching um, him and Bo and them. But, you know, Drew's been stepping as a leader. Um, he's been doing good things throughout the spring and camp so far. So big things for him. What are some of the things that you learned last year from Sean? Uh, yeah, I would say just the biggest thing in general is never get too high, never get too low. Um, just because we, we always have to be steady. There, not, not everything is going to go our way as an offense. As, as much as we want it to, things are not going to go our way. So we have to be able to bounce back right away, have a six-second mentality, what Coach Franklin always talks about, just one play at a time. Don't get too worried about the future or the past and just take it one play at a time. Dynamic backfield. You know, you can make the argument, or you probably wouldn't argue with it. You'll say you're the best yeah. backfield in, <laughs> in college football. Do you guys have a nickname? How's the competition? Uh, do you have side competitions? In yeah, I know what you mean. Uh -huh. um, yeah, everybody calls us like Thunder Lightning, that little combo thing. But yeah, me and I Cage, hate that. By the way, you know, I like mean, it's so old. Too old. <laughs> right? It's just old. Can we get something new, fresh? Have you heard like Fat Man and Gatorade? That's what I was Did you say Fat Man and Gatorade? Gatorade. Yeah. That's a good one. I <laughs> think I like that one. Okay, go back to my question. Go back to my question. <laughs> nah, um, but yeah, but K-Tron and me, we've been always competing ever since we stopped on campus last year. Um, it's been getting really good. It's, um, obviously, the other running backs are stepping in. Cam, Tank, I can name all the running backs. We're just competing because, you know, Coach Sider, he always preaches, like, whatever you did last year doesn't matter, you know. Um, everybody has a position. Um, everybody's role is changing, so you always got to compete. You guys are practicing against a, what I believe an, an elite defense. Mm -hmm. What do you see from, from your perspective? Because you have to go against them, particularly when they start to bring the pressure on you. Yeah, I mean, I think they they just apply pressure at all four levels or three levels of the defense. Obviously, we got the defensive front with Chop, Adisa, just the main two edge rushers. And then you have a guy like Denai who's really going to do big things this year. So they, they present a bunch of different challenges, just those three guys alone. And then you add in the linebackers, Abdul, Dom DeLuca, Tyler Ellison, and Kobe, uh, Curtis. They, they do a great job with just their stunt game, their twist game up front, given our offensive line issues, which is going to be really good for us in the long term just because we're going to see stuff like that throughout the year. And then you got the back end of the defense with Kalen, Johnny, Cam Miller, who I think is going to do really good this year. And our safeties, Jay Reed, Zaki, KJ, Keaton, all doing really good things, doing a good job of holding and disguising. 
Uh, and then obviously you got Coach Diaz at the helm of that whole defense. So he, he presents a lot of different challenges to us as an offense. But I think it's going to be the best thing for us down the road because they're giving us very challenging looks and we're going to be able to learn from them. And as soon as we see, the, see those looks in the game, we're going to be able to be familiar with those and get into the right checks. All right, the last question, and you're getting it because we haven't talked about the big guys up front and just how well they've transitioned the job they did last year right. and they big things are expected out of this group again this year to help you guys uh, move move forward and really compete for that championship. Tell me about them. Oh yeah, the old line's been doing a heck of a job throughout spring. Yeah, in the spring, um, they've been doing so good. Um, in the summer, they've been working their butts off, always here in the morning doing extra work. And throughout camp, they just we just, you know, we follow them and um, they've been doing good things. So I just can't wait for the season. Did you say Gatorade and Fat Boy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Drew, I don't know how you feel about that, but I think we're going to roll with it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great year. Appreciate yep. it. Man. Thank you. Tons more to come here from State College. We'll speak with both coordinators. Mike Yursich and the offense took a huge step forward last year. Can they continue that momentum? Manny Diaz made a huge impact in year one with the defense. Plus, we will talk to head coach James Franklin. All that coming up as we continue our camp preview from State College. Playing for James Franklin, he's a master motivator. Uh, he gets you motivated each day to go out and be your best. The way that Coach Franklin describes it is that we just keep a one and all mentality. And that's mainly been his whole message of kind of focusing on the moment and, and cherishing the moment. He's infected all of us with that motto. If we're able to focus on, again, like what's in front of us, and whoever we play that week and maximize it, get the most out of it, we believe that we can go one and all every week. Year number 10 for James Franklin at Penn State had his fourth 11-win season in 22, culminating in the Rose Bowl win over Utah, a really good bounce back after a couple of down years. And James Franklin joins me now. We'll get into the practice in just a bit, but 10 years, that's remarkable. How do you feel like your program has, has grown in that time? Well, first of all, it's somewhat sad that 10 years is like alarming now, you know, professionally, but yeah, I'm proud of it. Um, you know, you guys know better than most, you know, um, kind of where the program was when we got here. So um, I'm very proud of, of where we're at now in terms of uh, development, in terms of uh, scheme, in terms of recruiting, uh, fan base support, you know, and then obviously the success that we've had. There's still there's still growth that needs to happen there. But but overall, I think the program is in a very healthy place. Well, I would back that up based on what we saw today. This is a really good practice. It's obvious you have an exceptional group. First day in pads, what do you think you've accomplished to this point in camp? Well, I, I thought the hitting was really good. And, and, you know, when you talk about specific tackling, uh, we did an open field tackling period today, and I thought it was really good. And that's one of the harder things to do right now, the way the rules have changed. Um, I think our tag off tempos and our thud tempos when we don't go to the ground, I think the guys have had a really good attention to detail, which allowed us to, to tackle really, really well today. Um, and that's a dying art in, in some ways. Um, but it was physical. I thought we had a really physical practice, obviously, there's a lot we got to get cleaned up from a technique and fundamental standpoint. But I thought we, f we flew around, we were physical today, uh, made some plays, but there'll be a ton of learning from a situational football standpoint. Having a new quarterback, having a young quarterback who's very much in the spotlight, what is the advice that you give him as he heads into kind of this uncharted territory? And of course he played some last year, but to be the focal point of a team that's expected to compete for a national championship. Yeah, I think um, he's handled it really well. He's a poised guy. Um, he lives the quarterback position, really both of them, him, him and Bo both do. They live the position. They're in the facility, uh, you know, all hours of the day, studying it, asking a ton of questions, taking great notes. I do think the experience that Drew got last year, he played in almost every game on the road, as you know, to open the season uh, at Purdue in a tough environment. So he's played in, in a ton of games last year. I think that will help him. But as you know, it's different doing it full time. But 
he's just doing all the things necessary to give him the best chance to be successful. So I feel good about it, um, but now we got to go out and do it. Rest of the group around him, obviously you have a ton of experience. That offensive line, and we've talked a lot about the offensive line through the years, and you've said it, it needs to get better. Do you feel like it's where you need it to be now? Well, what I say last year? You said you weren't going to talk about it. You weren't going to talk them up anymore. You and, were going to wait and, and, and see how it And then you guys thought they played pretty good, right? We did. So I'm not talking about them again <laughs> this year. Uh, but I do think we've made progress there. Same thing, uh, tight end is, I think, a complimentary position. So I feel like we're strong there. I think those two units w work well together. With a first-year starting quarterback, however it plays out, you know, we also have two tailbacks that we can lean on and rely on behind an experienced offensive line and tight end, so that will help too. Um, so I think we've, we've made good progress there. We have better depth. We got pretty good experience across the board. And obviously, when you got a guy like Olu Fashanu, who's kind of leading the charge, uh, that helps. You lost two of your leading receivers from last year. You went into the portal. It looks like you helped yourself a lot there based on what we saw today. How have you kind of seen that group come together? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's still a question mark for us. Uh, when you got Keandre Lambert, who's played a bunch of football for us, um, and then all, all on top of that, Trey, um, you know, those two guys we view as kind of starters, experienced guys that have proved it. Um, and now there's a competition with probably five to six guys for not only that third spot, but guys that we feel confident that can rotate in. So I think we've done some pretty good things in the off season. Um, I think, I think uh, uh, Marcus, our receivers coach uh, that came in from the University of Virginia has done a phenomenal job. He's got a great background, got great experience. Um, so I see progress there. You mentioned hiring new coaches and you have a staff where people are gonna get hired off of it. You had Brett Pry go to Virginia Tech. Manny Diaz came in as a defensive coordinator last year, and it was seamless. I mean, you were fabulous defensively. How do you find the right fit when, when you're hiring an assistant coach? Well, I think the first thing is you don't wait, right? I, I'm, I'm kind of keeping track of guys right now. I got some of my op staff kind of running numbers and guys that I'll go to the convention and have lunch and dinner with. So I'm just constantly uh, trying to stay ahead of that so that if it does happen, you already got it down to two or three guys that you feel like can fit the role from a geographic perspective, from a schematic standpoint, from an experience. Uh, sometimes you're going to promote from within. Sometimes you're going to go out, outside. Uh, so we just try to stay ahead of it as much as you can. Or if you're starting to kind of figure out who you're going to hire, the process just starts when it happens. It, it's almost too late. What excites you the most about that side of the ball? Well, I just think, you know, Manny does a great job. We got an attacking style defense. Uh, we're in your face, press coverage. There's no access throws or easy yards on the field. I always talk about like when I was at Maryland back in the day in the ACC and you play Florida State and Mickey Andrews and they would load the box and press you up on the outside. It was just, there was no easy yards. And that's the style of defense that we're playing now and our players have embraced it. Um, and then obviously when you got defensive ends that can rush the passer and you got more girth and size and explosion at D tackle and then the linebackers were a big question mark coming in the last season, it's no longer the case. It feels like that's going to be, you know, should be one of our strengths. Uh, losing the guy, two guys that we lost in the secondary, that's a question like it was at wide out. Um, but we got a ton of guys that we feel like have played a ton of football that are ready to step up. James, it's been a really interesting week in college football, obviously, with the expansion news affecting the Big Ten. I'm just curious, kind of looking ahead to next year, I know you typically don't recruit on the West Coast, but does it change your program at all to have those schools in the league, whether it's through recruiting or just exposure? How does it, how's the equation different? Well, I think it has to, right? Whenever the equation changes, you got to sit back and you got to say, okay, what is in our best interest based on the new model? Um, you know, not only from a recruiting standpoint, from a travel perspective for games that we're going to play out there. Um, I do think this is bit, was a win for USC and UCLA, who are going to have to spend most of their time traveling across the country. It doesn't completely even it out, but it helps with that. Um, but yeah, I think all of us, every program in the Big Ten has got to say, okay, how does this change things specific to my institution? Obviously, for us, when you're the furthest east, us and Rutgers, um, it magnifies it even more. So you better have a plan, you better be strategic. 
Speaking of scheduling, I, I know you don't like to talk about anything other than your next opponent, so let's talk about your next opponent. It's a pretty interesting one. West Virginia back on the schedule. This was a great regional rivalry for many years. Haven't played them since Penn State joined the Big Ten. What does this game mean to your fans and your fan base to have it back? Yeah, I think exactly what you're saying. Um, you know, college football is getting further and further away, you know, from being a, a regional, um, you know, game, especially in a regular season. So when you can get, get a game like this where it's easy for their fans uh, to travel over here to Happy Valley, uh, they like to tailgate, they like to party, we like to tailgate, we like to party. <laughs> it's going to be a 7.30 uh, night game. Uh, I think it's going to be a tremendous environment. I got a ton of respect for Neil Brown and, and what he's done with that program. So uh, it's a great opportunity. I think it's going to be a game that a lot of people nationally are going to want to watch because um, they're not always the type of games that people open their seasons with. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for welcoming us in. It's always great to be here. Really always. appreciate Thank your time. Thank you so much. As loaded as Franklin's roster is, they did lose some serious talent, including three second round picks. Six drafted at all, which is nothing new. The sixth straight year that Penn State has had at least five players selected by NFL teams. The Penn State defense was outstanding under first year coordinator Manny Diaz last season. He'll join us with thoughts on year two next. It's not often that a true freshman defender makes the kind of impact that Abdul Carter did a year ago, 56 tackles for one of the nation's top 10 scoring Ds. It's the most of any returning player on the roster. The TFL and sack totals rivaled only by new D-line coach Dion Barnes. Carter, one of the headliners, but there are a lot of talented players. I mean, Howard, you go up and down this defense. There are stars at every level. It is a really good group. And in, in a defense, in a personnel grouping that's really versatile. I mean, if they want to rush the passer, they can rush the passer with not just their defensive ends, but their linebackers. This is a really talented group. And, and as we watched them today, you know, just the physicality of the practice and what they were able to do, because there were times where, you know, they were dominating this offense. And we all agree that this offensive line is so much improved, but they are just so quick, so talented, so strong and long the length that um, Coach Diaz really has this group playing at a high level. Yeah, incredible athletic defense. And, you know, there's 24 first downs, about 24 first downs in every game. And this is a defense that if they can get a behind schedule on first down, you know, if you're a running team, you want to gain at least four yards on first down. If you're a passing team, I guess you don't really care. But the point is, regardless of who this defense is playing, if they can get them in situation football, I mean, that's where they're going to be at their strength. So they've got to win first down, whatever, whether it's a run or pass type of offense they're defending, because if they get you in second and 10, they get you in third and long, they get you in an advantageous defensive position, yeah. the way they run, they'll win that. Yeah, it feels like when they can dictate, they create so much chaos. And that's what I was, that was going to be my next point. We've seen this shift, and it's been happening, particularly when you have a talented group where you're able to dictate pace to an offense. And, and that's something that has become more prevalent in the college football game because just how athletic these guys and, and just how interchangeable they are as parts. There was a play I'm watching inside drill. I think Abdul Carter, uh, who is <laughs> lights out, right? He's rushing the, the right tackle or the left tackle at the moment, and it, was, it wasn't even fair. It, it really wasn't fair. And he just has that ability, that quickness. And now to, that he's comfortable with who he is and what they're asking him to do, and he's continuing to develop his game, he is going to be tough. It's the reason that people think he can win the defensive player of the year in the Big Ten Conference. You know, Rev, you asked Coach Franklin about his staff. He's been here 10 years. He replaces coaches. Uh, Manny Diaz has been a perfect fit. Yeah. I mean, he's connected with the players on a personal level. Yeah. I mean, that's clear. And he's been a head coach. You know, he's loyal as they come uh, so the combination of his excellence and the way the defense runs is a pretty good combination I do want to ask you guys really quickly I, I think if there's one concern it might be in the secondary just because of the quality of players he lost Joey Porter Jr. Jair Brown what did you see from that group I, I, I'm not at all concerned about it at this point because what I see is the athleticism is there sure the the game experience may not be there 
but this is a talented group on the back end. You look at those safeties, they can cover from hash to hash. They're going to be able to make it to the sideline to, to, to help out those corners at time. They are aggressive at the point of attack. And I got to tell you, who's benefiting are these young, inexperienced wide receivers. Because this defense, the way they pressure and the way they play man-to-man, -man, this is a group that's talented. And I, I don't have any issue at all with what they're doing defensively. I like what they're doing on the back end. I was going to look at it the other way, Howard, and say that they'll get ready in the back end because of the talented wide receivers yeah. and because of the nature of the Penn State offense, right? So they're going against one another. Uh, you know, Mike Yersich wants to throw the ball. They're a throwing attack. So as long as there's talent, they'll develop it. So I think that wide receiver defensive back thing is going to work yeah. really well <laughs> developing one another. It yeah. is interesting that those are maybe the two units that if there were to be question marks, right. the most would be about them, and, and there they are going head-to-head -head each and every Some day. Some tells me they'll answer that question yeah, real quick. Questions might be answered in the <laughs> affirmative. Talk about just how good that defense was last year under first-year coordinator Manny Diaz getting to the quarterback as much as any team in the country. Pressures and hurries. They were fourth in the nation in tackles for loss, top seven as well in sacks and takeaways. Coach, how's it different being at Penn State the second year than it was the first? Well, it helps to have famil familiarity, not just with our players, but with the league. Right. Uh, you've got a better idea of how you match up. Um, and then we just understand each other. You know, I think they know really the nuances and difference in the scheme from, from what had been done before. And, um, and they're excited about what it can be in year two. Really successful season last year. I mean, you lost the two playoff teams. What do you have to do? Uh, better this year defensively to be better on defense and, and you were awful good yeah well those teams taught us some important lessons we'd rather not learn them in October right and so to me what we'd rather do is start the year in September fully understanding what it takes to compete at that level and we've been practicing for that all off season um, we did get better as year went on which all good teams should do but we feel like we should be ready to play at a championship level uh, with the opener so as you go as you've gone into the beginning of camp strengths of the defense well, we like we love our depth um, at all three levels. We have a lot of guys coming back who have made big time plays in big time games. Uh, what we need is we need our alphas. We we did lose some pretty important alphas off of last year's team um, at all three levels. So um, that's part of what we're we're working on out on the practice fields in August. And um, I am I'm confident by the time September comes around, we'll have those questions answered. This offense that you go against every day is incredibly talented. How does that help you get ready for the season? Very talented and very multiple. You can't just hope you know your job's an assignment. You have to know, know it. And, uh, and that's been great. It's been great for our older players. It keeps them sharp, including our, and our young players. It helps them learn. You mentioned young players. Tell us some of the first-year guys we may see. Well, it's, we had some really breakthrough guys a year ago with Abdul, Dennis Sutton, uh, some young guys like Cam Miller, K.J. Winston, that I think have a chance to have a role this year. Of the true freshman class, um, that's still be, to be determined. I mean, Jameel Lyons has flashed the first week. Obviously, Tony Rojas was here um, in the spring. King, uh, King Mack is off to a great start, but it's really early. And when you start singling out guys after their first week, you know you know the wall is coming for all those guys. Right. But we're, we're happy with all the guys that we signed. With so many young guys being athletic enough to play and with the portal, uh, has it done anything to the way you install a defense? Does it slow it down? Does it speed it up? Well, I think you have to get the idea where you want to get everybody ready to play in year one. You know, uh, you know, obviously you're going to develop them at their own time. Uh, but the idea that, you know, you can just hope and wait and get guys in their fourth and fifth year in the program, get them ready to play, they may not be there. So I think there's an urgency from a coaching staff uh, to make sure that the entire football team that we, we're coaching, the, the young guy who just got dropped off from the school bus to the oldest guy, we coach them all the same way. Today was the first day in pads. What were your first impressions before you see the tape? Well, obviously, as a defense corner, you want to see your team tackle. Um, and I, th I thought we tackled well for the first day, and we got some hard people to tackle. And uh, that's a big thing. That's invaluable. That's great film. As we know, all across the country, we have limited opportunities to do that. And uh, so it's important that our players do it with a great sense of urgency, and I thought we had that today. Appreciate your time, Coach, and love watching your work. Thank you. Great seeing you again. On the other side of the ball, as always, a ton of focus on the quarterback spot. Offensive coordinator Mike Yersich on the growth of his young QB straight ahead. Penn State's offense took a huge step forward last year, up nearly 11 points per game over 2022. The Nittany Lions scored 33 or more points nine times after doing so just twice the year before. 
the man who orchestrated it all, coordinator Mike Yersich with Jerry. Coach, what's the most important thing for a first-year quarterback to learn? I think it, it all starts with identifying your run game and protections. Really, it's, it starts there because you really can't move any further without understanding the fundamentals of, of where the IDs are, both in the run and in the pass. Um, and that's something, you know, right from day one, the foundation, that's where we start. How difficult is that for a young guy? It seems like that's the biggest obstacle with young quarterbacks. That's, you know, they play a lot of seven on seven. So you're getting that uh, all throughout the country. And then it's just, you know, whether or not they're getting taught that in high school, it's just specific to your, your system. So just getting them well versed in, in how we identify the verbiage and, and um, the identifications, like I said, I think that's, that's the biggest learning curve. In Drew's situation with what appears to be the best offensive line that's been here at Penn State in many years mm -hmm. with two great running backs, how does that help a young quarterback? Well, you, you, it takes the pressure off them. You're able to maintain balance. Um, obviously, those, those running backs in the offensive line are also pretty good in pass protection as well. So any time that you can establish the run, take the pressure off, be balanced, and, and keep the defense on its heels and give no tendencies, all of those sorts of things are always going to help the quarterback. There's been a lot of talk about your offensive line, about your running backs, obviously about your quarterback. Not so much talk about your wide receivers other than yep. they have to develop. Yep. Based on today, it certainly seems like they're developing. Tell yeah. us, tell us about them. Yeah, they're they're a competitive room. I think uh, Marcus Hagens, uh, Coach Hagens, has done a tremendous job developing those guys, um, making sure that the mindset's right. I think that's a that's a big deal with him and how he enters the room every day. And then it really starts there, and then it goes into the fundamentals. Um, it goes into the understanding of the, the, the bigger concepts, you know, the bigger picture, rather, and understanding why we're doing certain things, not just go run a curl route. It's, okay, why are we at this depth, and why are we releasing inside? So we're just trying to continue to peel it back so they are more versatile, and we have some flexibility within our unit there, um, but also so they, they know the reasons why we're doing what we're doing. Do you often meet quarterbacks and receivers, or do you meet separately? Try to do it almost every day um, when time permits. So in camp, you get a, a lot of time to meet um, offensive skill-wise. We meet as a unit. We meet as a skill-wise. Usually the tight ends, receivers, and tailbacks are, are with uh, the quarterbacks as well all together. But then there is the time where we'll watch one-on-ones just with the wide receivers and quarterbacks as well. Talk about the specific wide receivers. Give us, give us a little scout report on the young guys. Well, we you know, you know, Keandre is, is uh, a really dynamic receiver, and he's still growing, and he's still learning. And I think he's got a very high ceiling. He's fast. He runs really good routes. Um, he's getting better off press coverage. And so he's continuing to grow, and, and he's a seasoned guy with a lot of reps under his belt, so we expect him to continue to trend in the, in the right direction. Um, Trey Wallace is another guy that's, that's got good speed and he's got some power. He's got really good strength numbers. And then, you know, the rest of the guys we need to continue uh, to compete. You know, Omari Evans is a guy that has to continue to learn the game. He's still relatively young. Uh, Liam Clifford's a guy that we expect big things from. Um, both Malik's are, are guys that have the size and the speed. And we're going to continue to just push that room and, and make sure that they're becoming the best receivers that they possibly can be. And, you know, that's what competition's all about. So we're going to need all of those guys. Right. And I hate to just single a few yeah, of them out, you know, you, you know, but, uh, you know, we're excited. I'd say they look pretty talented today, and it was a pretty physical practice. It was. It, we had a lot of situations where you have to be physical. Right. Short sure. yardage and four-minute and uh, third down situations. So it was a, a taxing day, no doubt. It was impressive. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank time. you, Coach. You Appreciate bet. you. The dramatic conclusion of our show next. We'll wrap things up with final thoughts on our day with the Nittany Lions. Back in State College as we wrap things up after an eventful day with the Nittany Lions. The question on everybody's mind, and we were in town today and people were asking us, is this the year? Is this the year that Penn State beats Ohio State, beats Michigan, wins a Big Ten championship, makes it to the playoff? 
How well equipped is this team to do all those things? Yeah, to me, this is all about matchups. I'll give you an example. Can they stop Michigan's direct run? In other words, Michigan's a downhill offense. Mm -hmm. Can Manny Diaz's defense stop that? When they play Ohio State, can they make Ohio State one-dimensional because they're only they're, they have only two offensive linemen coming back? Ohio State doesn't predict to be a great run team. Can they stop the run? And now can they play the Ohio State pass game in the back end? It's all about matchups with these three teams. I will say this, Dave, after watching them, this team is locked and loaded. We, we have not seen them at this level yet, and they have every opportunity to achieve their goals after what we just saw today. Now, we haven't seen the other two, but I'm confident in what I just saw today, that this is a, not a good team, but a really good team. The one thing I worry about is the direct run of Michigan's against this defense because this defense doesn't see it in practice. You know, it's not the downhill. You know, Michigan's running. Mm -hmm. It's a throwback offense. It's hard to defend yeah. because no one else is running it. So, to me, that's their biggest obstacle if I could narrow it down to a real simple fundamental. It's going to be fascinating. It is. Right there. And you said it off the top, Jerry, and I think we all believe it. This is the best team we've seen from James Franklin no at the time that he's been here. And he's had some really yeah, good ones, yes, yes. so, so that says something. We are heading back on the road. We're going to make the relatively short journey to Rutgers, 224 miles. We'll go over 2,000 miles <laughs> for this trip, which is uh, a drop in the bucket compared to what the we're going to be doing. Yes. yes. <laughs> Do you get credit for I don't think I get credit. Okay, no, I was just no, checking. No, I wasn't here. So I, when I say we, it's the royal we. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you guys. I'll, I'll, we'll break down maybe Rever's mileage later. Thanks to everyone here in State College. Always a pleasure to visit here. We will see you from Piscataway on Wednesday.